Hi y'all, it's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. I want to introduce y'all to a new series called Breed It Better, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what the heck I'm talking about, so let's jump right into this. So about six months ago, my friend got a pair of breeding Californians from a local breeder who basically sold her crap stock, right? Now, this is a lady who, she goes to shows, she wipes the shows clean. Now, that could be one of two things. Either she has amazing animals or she has no competition. I think it's because she has no competition. So I decided, let's make a series called Let's Breed It Better, where I take the lackluster we have for Californians and turn them into grand champion winning Californians. Now, you might be asking Madison, why would you do this? Some of it is spite and I'm childish. So there's that. But the other part of it is my need for educational points. And we talk about all the time in the show arena that you can always breed better stock. You can take meh stock and turn them into amazing show animals. So the premise here is I'm going to take our Californians, which are amazing meat rabbits, and turn them into grand champion show rabbits. That means we are no longer focusing on just grow out. We are focusing on body types and we are also focusing on color marking. In order to kind of break down what we need to do and what's going to happen, I am going to read the standard of perfections and introduce you to our stock. With that being said, I'm going to do another video after this in this series, thoroughly introducing you to each and every one of our rabbits that we're going to be using in this breeding program. So let's hop into that. For all intensive purposes, I'm just going to go over general type. So for body, the body shall have of medium length width depth of body to the approximate equal width. It shall have good depth of the hindquarters and well-developed shoulders, with the shoulders being slightly lower and narrower than the hips, forming a slight taper. The back is to rise gradually from the nape of the neck to the high point over the hips, to be plump and firm of flesh. Faults. Racy, mandolin, or any type away from a plump, firm, meaty body. Cut severely for shoulders wider than hip, long, narrow head, extra long neck, flatness over back, especially over hips, rough, bony, or protruding hips. Hindquarters are to be broad, deep, smooth, and well-rounded, with well-filled, firm flesh. Lower and back sides are to be well-filled. Hindquarters are to be slightly wider and deeper than shoulders, with enough depth and width to indicate roundness when viewed from any direction. The loin is to be broad and deep, with long enough width to blend into the hindquarters and midsection. Faults, narrow, flat, pinch, undercut, choppy, bony rump, weak loins, protruding hip bones, and rough over spine midsection rib section to gradually rise from the front of the hips it is to be broad and deep enough to balance the shoulders and hips midsection is to be well rounded with as much firm flesh as possible down the sides faults narrow flat rough are not well filled out shoulders shoulders are to be well developed with firm flesh they are to have good depth and width Shoulders are to be slightly lower and narrower than the hips. They are to rise from the front of the neck with a smooth taper towards the high point. Faults, too narrow or too wide to be balanced with hindquarters. Excessive fat or loose, flabby flesh over shoulders. Head. Head is to be well-shaped and medium full. It is to be carried erect on a short neck and set close to body. Bucks heads are to be a little fuller than does. Faults. Long, slim heads with pinched noses. Ears. Length is to be proportionate to the size of body. They are to be well set on the head, strong at the base, and carried in a straight upright position. Faults. Heavy, open, spoon-shaped, or weak, loose ear base. Eyes. Eyes are to be bright and bold. Feet and legs, bonus to be medium in size with rather short legs preferred. Toenails should be as dark as possible. Light colored nails showing pigmentation much matched that the foot and the corresponding foot. Faults, long or heavy bones. Disqualification from competition. One or more white toenails or those that carry no color other than the pink cast shed by the blood vessels. Tail, tails to be straight and carried erect. Length and size to be proportionate to the body. Fur, flyback fur, poor the ARBA commercial normal fur standard. Colors and markings. Californians are to have a colored nose, ears, feet, and tail. Colors to be as near black as possible. Eye stains or the colored spots confined to the dewlap are permissible. Body color is to be pure white, eyes pink. 
faults any other color. Disqualification from competition, any color or smut on the usable portion of the pelt. Color above the elbow joint of the front legs. Color on the rear legs is not extended more than two inches above the hock joint. With the fur, it is in normal position. Complete absence of color on the nose, ears, feet, or tail. Define clean white spots in coloring marks. Any tan pattern marking appearance in Californian markings. So yeah, that is the Californian standard of perfection and a picture of what they use as the standard comparative to what we have here. With that being said, in the next video, I'm going to sit down, work on some posing practice and go over the faults and the strengths of each individual animal when it comes to type as well as marking. So if you're interested in that, you're going to have to check out the other videos coming up in the future. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.